So you can tell I'm from Asheville because I felt comfortable presenting in shorts and sandals. Um, <laughs> so the program today is SEO Goes Local. Um, and the, the slides are already posted at bit.ly bit slash SEO Goes Local 2018. And this is the 2018 updated version of a talk that I gave three years ago here and I think a couple years ago in Atlanta. Um, quite a bit has changed since then, especially in terms of Google business listings. And also, um, there's a major Google algorithm update on August 1. Um, and we're going to talk about that towards the end of the program. So SEO is search engine optimization. Um, simply trying to improve our websites, to improve our rankings on Google and other search engines. It's a fairly simple concept, but a little more complex in terms of implementation. And local SEO is a little different. So local search is when someone searches to find products, stores, services, or events in their area. And Google tells us that about 30% of all search has local intent. So when you think about the billions of searches that happen each day, that's a significant number. Can everyone hear me okay? I see some people saying louder. Okay, so um, I've got some screenshots here. I tried not to show any local businesses, um, but and I'm not sure how easy this one is to make out, but I think you'll get the general concept here, just to be sure we're all on the same page. Um, these are pay, paid ads. Uh, this is a search for Santa Rosa attorneys. And then these are organic results, which are local results. Uh, they're showing local businesses and local listings. And then this is what we call the map pack or the three pack. It's three locations keyed to the map. And then if you click the more places link here, which most people will not do, you'll be taken to a page like this. And depending upon the query, you may get page after page after page of results with 20 results per page. Obviously, it's best to be in the top three and be there on the front page of Google. So who benefits from local SEO? And this will tell you if you're in the right room or not. Several different types of businesses. One, if you have a brick and mortar location, a physical presence where people come to you, you have regular hours, and that can be everything from you know, a dentist or attorney's office. It can be a mechanic, um, grocery store, convenience store, uh, anything where people actually go to that physical location. Service area businesses also benefit from local SEO. So here we're talking traditionally about uh, things like plumbers and electricians, landscapers. Uh, most of them will not have an office where people come to them. Usually they go and perform their service um, at someone's home or at a business. Uh, and this also includes people like web developers, uh, web designers, consultants, uh, marketers, SEO folks such as myself. Many of these service area businesses are home-based businesses. Uh, I've got an uh, office downstairs at my home. I love the commute. There's never a traffic jam unless the dog's on the stairs. Um, but home-based businesses benefit from this as well. And I'm going to show you how you can rank and show up on Google Maps um, without showing the location of your home without showing your home address, which is a pretty cool trick. So I typically think of five components for local search, uh, five things that influence it. Google and some other major listings, citations, which I'll define when we get to that part, links back from other websites pointing to your website, reviews, and then the things you can do on your own website. Now I'm going to go through each of these. I'm going to define them and offer some tips and then I'll talk about how they each tie into your WordPress site. So the first one's Google, and it's the, uh, I wanna start with it because it's the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Your Google business listing is very important, and you can search for your business online, and then over here on the right side in what we call the knowledge panel, if it hasn't been claimed, you'll see a link like this that says, do you own this business? So you can go there to claim the listing. If you've got a new business, uh, and Google doesn't know about it yet, or you're just setting it up, you can go to google.com slash business to set up the listing there. Um, but once you do this, you gain control over here uh, of a lot of the things on the right side in what we call the knowledge panel. 
So you can go in, you can add photos if the category is wrong or not the best category, or if you have additional categories you can add, you can do those, you can correct the hours. Google starts to give you power to change what's actually showing up on the search results when people are searching for your business. Now, the knowledge panels expanded dramatically in the last few years. And so now we see things like questions and answers. People can actually ask a question about your business directly there on the knowledge panel, and somebody can answer that. And hopefully that's you, the business owner, and not just somebody who you know, may know a little bit about your business. You can also see other reviews, not just Google reviews. Here they've got reviews from Facebook. Uh, what's the most popular times for this business? When is it likely to be busiest? And now we see things like this. This is Google Posts. So this, this is a really in interesting feature. Google's giving the opportunity to do something kind of like a blog post right in the knowledge panel. Uh, you can see this one's got a click to buy button. You can do like click for more information. You can list events here. There's a lot of things you can do with this with Google Posts. And a lot of people are finding that it does improve conversions and that it can't even um, increase uh, organic rankings for some terms. Now, if you're in certain fields, you can even get this book online button. I think right now it's restricted to fitness and beauty categories, but uh, I expect it'll expand to others as well. Now, what's happened as a result of all this that shows up in the knowledge panel now is that people are getting all the information they need directly from Google without having to come to your website that much. So 60%, over 60% of all mobile searches do not result in a click to a website now. So that's a, that's a pretty high number. And you may think this is you know, a terrible thing. We spend all this money and time on our website, improving our websites and all, but you know, Google's interdicting this traffic. And in some ways, yeah, I understand that, but also for most of us, the goal of our business, the ultimate goal of our business is not to drive people to our website, it's to get more people in the door, get them buying products and services from us, and if Google helps with that, then that's great. But you're seeing things like this crop up. People are talking about this, they're saying Google's the new homepage, uh, Google wants to be the transaction layer of the web, and Google wants to be the presentation layer of the internet. So that's what all these people are talking about, is people are going to Google, looking for information on businesses, and they're finding it without ever going to the website. Google's trying to keep them on their site uh, rather than sending them to yours. So I, I think we're going to have a lot of time for, for questions and answers as we go along and at the end of the program, but um, I'm not going to get into Google questions and answers and Google posts and Google bookings right now, but I would encourage you all, if you have a business, uh, if you have a local business, to investigate especially Google Q&A and Google posts more because there's some great opportunities there for businesses. So some other tips. If you have multiple locations, you need to have a separate Google business listing for each one. So if you've got several restaurants around the county, you have to have a separate listing for each one. You will need to verify the ownership of the listing. So this is typically done with a postcard that Google will mail you after you claim the listing. Uh, usually gets there in about a week, uh, four to six digit pin. Then you go back to google.com Google slash business and enter that pin code and then you have access to the knowledge panel to, uh, to improve your listing. You wanna be sure that you choose an appropriate category for your business, um, or categories, plural. This is one of the easiest wins in local SEO, and I have had the experience where sometimes it's rare, but sometimes the category is completely unrelated to the business. Um, but I have had situations where they don't have the best category or there's a second category that needs to be added to help them rank. But I, um, I have seen where I can go in once I get access to the listing, I can go in and change the category to something better or add a second category and within a couple of minutes, literally, they are at the top of the rankings for a term they've been struggling to rank for. So those categories, business categories, are incredibly important. You also want to add lots of high quality photos to your Google business listing. Uh, so those show up in the knowledge panel. There's a very strong correlation between the number of photos uploaded and rankings. That, I'm sure that's correlation and not causation. The people who are doing that are probably doing a lot of other things right too that we're going to talk about today. 
And then you want to complete your profile. Whatever Google gives you the opportunity to add to it, you want to go in, you want to fill in all those fields, you want to add a business description, which is new, that's just come back, they had taken that away for a while. Um, you want to, there's a place where you can uh, check off amenities that your business may have, you know, if there's like a unisex restroom, wheelchair accessibility, things like that, uh, pets allowed, you want to go in and make sure those things are correct as well. And as I said, you can hide your address if you are a home-based business. Any of you have home-based businesses? All right, that's what I thought. Okay, so I, I think the interface has changed a little bit, but if you go in to, to create a new listing, it's going to look something like this. You're going to see a checkbox says, my business has service areas where I visit customers at their location. And once you check that, it will expand, and you'll also see this, I serve customers at my business address. And if you're a home-based business, you want to uncheck this. So most service area businesses, most home-based businesses are, are not going to do this. Um, but there are service area businesses that have a physical location too. Uh, I was working with an HVAC contractor recently, and they probably have 100 employees. They've got a big shop in town. People can actually go there and visit them. They have regular hours there, but most of their staff are out in the field. So if you have a home-based business, uncheck that box. I serve customers at my business address unless you actually want them coming to your home office and you have regular office hours there. And then you can show up in the map pack. So notice that this first one, this is a, a search for Memphis, Tennessee landscapers. Notice that the first one, there's no click for directions button. There's no address showing like there are for the other two, and they're ranking number one. So yes, you can, it will not harm your ability to rank. All right, so I said Google, et cetera, because there's some other major players that are really important that have, where you can have these major listings set up. Um, Yelp, Apple, Bing, Facebook, we'll talk about each of these. If you're in a business that depends upon tourists at all, even a restaurant or something like that in Asheville, then TripAdvisor is another one that I would advise you to have a good listing on as well. So for Apple, Apple Maps, you can go to mapsconnect.apple.com to add a listing. This is just for businesses with a physical presence, with a storefront, um, not for service area businesses, unfortunately, at this time, because it's tied to navigation. It's tied to navigation on iPhones. But if you, uh, if you want to show up, if you do have a location like that and you want to show up for searches on iPhones, on Apple Maps, or for native web searches on iPhones, then it's important to create that listing and claim it. And all of these, you want to fill in every possible field they give you. Apple will let you link to your Facebook page, your Twitter uh, page, so you just want to fill everything in that you can. Facebook is an interesting one because they have some great opportunities in local search. As a matter of fact, their local business pages are all going to change in the next week. They've been sending out um, notices to businesses, but these are all going to change in the next week or so. I don't think Facebook has made a full play for the local search market yet. I think they're going to give Google more competition in this area, and I think they're going to do more mainly because it's an area they can monetize and they can, they can expand some of the things they're doing, um, even though they're having some retractions in ad spending otherwise. One tip for Facebook, you can have three business categories. So if there are three relevant categories for your business, make sure you're using all of those. Bing places for business. A lot of desktop search still happens on Bing. Very little mobile search, but a lot of desktop search still happens on Bing. So it's an important place to be. It also powers a lot of Alexa voice search results. So that's an important place to be. And then Yelp is another one, especially for a lot of categories, but you'd be surprised at some of the categories. I mean, if you search for uh, chiropractors or mechanics or attorneys, you're going to see probably one of the first organic results in any town is going to be, you know, the 10 best mechanics in Asheville or something like that. It's going to be a Yelp page. So this is a place you want to be. Uh, Yelp has a lot of issues, especially associated with the reviews. A lot of business owners really hate them, and we'll talk about that when we get to the review section of the program. And then TripAdvisor, again, if you have a business that depends upon tourists at all, then I uh, highly recommend that you have a well-developed TripAdvisor page, too. All right, so those are the major listings. Things you can do on your website to help with this. 
Your website's a really good data source for Google and other search engines. So you want to make sure it is a good data source for them. One thing you want to do is you want to have the name, address, and phone number of your business in text on every page of the site. Also with Google, there's an interesting thing going on. Um, if, you're, if you have like a national e-commerce site or something, and you're trying to rank for something, you've got a product, and it's just on an interior page, Google will find that. You know, they'll rank you for it, fine. But if you're, if you're trying to rank in the map pack as a local business, it's really important to have those keywords that you're trying to rank for on your home page. So let's say you're a plumber or an electrician, but you also do solar panel installation. If you want to rank for solar panel installers, you want to use those words or something closely related to them on your home page. It does make a big difference only in map pack rankings. And then you want to have a location page with a Google map embed, unless you're a home-based business. So um, you'll typically see things like this, uh, where there's an address, but there's a better way to do this. And and by doing it the way I'm going to show you, you can actually pull in the business name. You can pull in reviews from your Google business listing. And what this does, uh, a lot of times with SEO, all we're trying to do is we're trying to make it easier for Google to figure things out. We're trying to connect the dots for them. So what this does is it actually ties together your website, Google Maps, your physical location in the world, and your Google business listing because this information, the... Um, the name of your business and those reviews are being pulled from your Google business listing. So here's how you do that. Search for your business, click on the map icon, and these slides are all posted, so I'm going to go through this pretty quick, but uh, click on the uh, hamburger menu once you're taking Apple Maps, share or embed map, and then you get this code. And you can Customize the size of it. They've got three stock sizes, but you can actually put in custom dimensions for pixels. Um, and once you do that, you get this. So you can just take this code, you can copy this code, and just drop it into the text tab on the location page of your website or whatever page you're trying to put it on. All right, so citations. Uh, moving on here. Citations are basically glorified directories. Web directories used to be important for rankings, not so much anymore, but they still are for local businesses. And the reason is, is that these, these listings have your business name, address, and phone number. And you're going to keep hearing me refer back to that one over and over today because it's so important. Um, and these are generally not listings that you've created. They get pulled from all sorts of data. They can be pulled from 20-year-old business licenses which is where some of the problems come in. So name, address, phone number, consistency, probably more so address and phone number consistency are really important. Business name, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're going to have, you know, some people may have LLC or Inc. appended to their listing, to their name some, on some listings and not on others. It's fine. Google can figure that all out. But... Google crawls the web, and they look at all these directories. They look at super pages. They look at yellowpages.com. They, they even look at places like Yelp and Facebook, and they're crawling the web, and they're compiling this information. Their algorithm's looking at all this information, your business name, address, and phone number. If you moved sometime in the past, or if your phone numbers change, then that can create problems, because if Google finds half of your listings have your old address and half have your current address, you're probably not going to rank very well because Google doesn't want to take a chance of sending someone to the wrong location, a business that's gone out of business, that's moved. They don't want to have them dial the wrong number. So this can definitely impact your rankings. And it's primarily, again, an issue if your address or phone number has changed. I suggest that you go to moz.com slash local. There's a check listing button there. And you can look and see across all these listings uh, what the consistency is. And then if you do need to go in and correct these, you can go in and claim the listings just like you did with Google and these other, these other listings. Fill them out thoroughly. If they let you link to social media profiles, if they let you write a description, if they let you add photos, then you want to do that. Um, it is helpful to have a well-developed profile on these sites. 
And then on your website, what can you do? Again, name, address, phone number, in text on every page. So the footer is a great place to put this if that's the most appropriate place on your site, um, but it is important to have there. And when I say name, address, phone number, and text, I mean not just in a graphic. You know, if you've got your business names there, it's part of a graphic image in your header, but the business name doesn't appear anywhere else on the web page, it's not in the HTML code, then you can see where that could cause a problem for Google in understanding things. All right, reviews. Reviews can make a huge difference for you. This is a, a search that I did recently uh, for franchise attorneys in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And you can see these guys rank number one, Shipe Dosik. Great, right? Well, who's getting the clicks? Yeah, exactly. So those review stars really draw your eye. The second result's probably getting a lot more clicks than the first result. Um, People can make a very quick decision about your business just on the result of something like this when they see those review stars. My number one tip for reviews is to ask for them. Ideally, you're asking every one of your customers for reviews. The businesses that have negative reviews for the most part are the ones that are not asking, are not proactively asking for reviews because who's gonna leave a review? Who's gonna take the time to do it? the people that did not have a good experience there, right? So the best way to increase your reviews and increase the number of positive reviews is just to ask people for them. I like using a feedback solicitation process. The one that I really like is get5stars.com, and that's with the five spelled out. I don't get any money from them, have no financial interest in it. I do have most of my clients on, on their service, though. It's ran by some of the top local SEO people in the country. They do a great job of keeping up with Google's terms of service, uh, schema markup that they can generate from reviews that you can embed on your website, all sorts of things. So um, it's a great service. I think it's like 30 bucks a month for a single location. Handle negative reviews with care. Uh, it's important to respond promptly to negative reviews, but if you're angry, uh, if there's like steam coming out of your ears and your face is all red and you're just so upset about something this person said, you say it's totally not true, then step away from the keyboard. Don't respond then. Um, you can do a lot of research online about how to handle negative reviews. There's a lot of information out there about you know the best ways to do it, but don't call anyone an idiot. Don't get into a flame war with them. Don't threaten to sue them. There's a lot of ways this can really go south for you really quickly. And don't stress about being perfect. One of the really interesting things about reviews is that businesses that have average ratings in the 4.3 to 4.7 range have a much better click-through rate than businesses that have a five-star rating. Because when somebody sees like 100 five-star reviews and that's all business has, they're thinking, I wonder if those are fake. So. Don't worry if you get a four-star review or a three-star review or even a one-star review sometimes. People want to know what somebody didn't like about your business. Were they just, are they just a crazy, cranky idiot? Um, did, was the parking lot full? Was the Wi-Fi out? They, they want to know. It's okay. Don't incentivize reviews. Do not offer discount. Do not offer freebie, anything like that. And then Yelp. Yelp is really an interesting case. Um, Yelp doesn't want you asking people to leave reviews. Google and Facebook and these other services don't care, but Yelp says don't ask customers for reviews, period. And it doesn't help anyway to ask customers for Yelp reviews really because most of them are gonna get filtered out. Yelp's gonna, Yelp filters aggressively. So if it's their first Yelp review ever or maybe even their 10th Yelp review ever, they may get filtered out, which is why a lot of businesses have just a few Yelp reviews and they have a lot of negative Yelp reviews there. Um, but there's a trick here that you can do. It only works if you have a physical location, if you have a storefront. You can create, on your Yelp business listing, you can create a Yelp check-in offer. And so somebody comes in with their phone, they hold it up, they say, you know, I'm claiming this, claiming this offer, whatever it is. 
And then within about 24 hours, Yelp is going to send them a notification saying, how was your experience at you know, Joe's Barbershop or wherever they went? So it's okay for Yelp to ask people for reviews, but not for you to ask people for reviews. Um, and I, I kind of understand their perspective, really. What they're doing here is they're making sure it's not a fake review. They're making sure that the person actually was a customer of your business and had an actual experience there. So that is a great way to build Yelp reviews if you have a physical presence, if you have a storefront or an office people come to. Uh, so again, tips, ask for them. It's the, the best way to get reviews. And then on your website, it's helpful to include testimonials. I would not restrict them to an interior page and just have a link in the menu. I've looked at analytics for so many sites, and I can tell you that those testimonials and review links in the menu just don't get many clicks at all. It's way down the list of pages people click on. The best way to do it is to embed some testimonials or reviews or snippets of them on your home page. And then if you want to have an interior page with more, you can link to those. The Get Five Stars system I was talking about has a widget that you can embed on your site. You can also do things like this. We talked about the Google Map that will pull in reviews. Uh, Yelp has widgets like this that you can use. All right, links. Um, links. Backlinks, links from other sites to yours have always been important ever since Google first started. You know, the, the, their page rank algorithm uh, initially, one of the big things about their algorithm was they looked at links from other websites to yours as a vote for your website. Um, so these are still a major ranking factor. It's one of the most important ranking factors that Google has. And for local SEO, local links are really critical. It's great to have links from the New York Times and Southern Living and all, and they will help you. But if you can do all these other things we're talking about right, and you have a few solid local links, that can make all the difference in the world. That may be all it takes to propel you to the top of your category. Now, I'm talking about different ranking factors for local SEO and different things that influence it. But another way to look at this uh, ranking factors for the map pack, people talk about relevance, proximity, and prominence. Relevance, you can't do anything about. If you're an electrician, you're not going to rank well when somebody searches for plumbers. Proximity, you can't do anything about. The searcher may be 50 feet from your business or 20 miles from your business. You're going to rank better if they're closer to you. Prominence, you do have control over, though. Prominence mainly comes down to local links and local media mentions. So how do you go about getting those? Nonprofits. A lot of times we'll link back, if you support nonprofits, charities in your community, a lot of times they'll link back to the businesses that support them. Get to know your local bloggers. They're a great resource. Uh, ideally, you get to know them before you uh, ask them for a link or anything. But if you have something newsworthy that you know, they might find interesting and share, then please send it to them. Business referrals. If you are a roofer and you're constantly refer referring people to a gutter business or uh, exterior painter, and you're sending them a lot of business, then ask them if they'd be willing to link to your website. If you are sending them a ton of business, they're probably going to do anything they can to keep you happy. Chamber of Commerce and Better Business Bureau links, those are great to have. They'll cost you a few hundred dollars a year, but they're really good. If you offer discounts for seniors, veterans, and students, uh, that is another place where you can often get some local links. Sponsoring events, neighborhood festivals, Sponsoring youth athletics is another thing you can do. Um, soccer team, little league team. Here in Asheville, we have this thing on the, the Mountain X, uh, which is a weekly newspaper. We have this thing called the Best of WNC Awards. And if you're in the area or if you have something similar in your area, one thing you can do is you can get someone to nominate your business for an award. And then if you have a good social media following, you can... Hit that, or email marketing list, which is a great thing to do as well. Um, you can uh, hit your social media following. You can say, hey, would you be willing to vote for us for you know, best of WNC in this category? Um, the people who win, I think the top three in each category actually get uh, an article on the website, uh, the Mountain X website. I guarantee you that a lot of the winners are doing this, using this process to get those awards. So um, it is something you can do. 
And then on your website, having a well-functioning, attractive website is a great thing to have because people are not going to want to link to your website if it's not. And then, of course, great content also attracts links. All right, and then things you can do on your site other than what we've been talking about. There's a lot of off-site factors in local SEO, as you can see. All these things before have to do primarily with things you can do off your website. Again, I um, just want to reiterate a couple of important points here. Homepage text really matters if you're trying to rank in the map pack for certain keywords. And then name, address, phone number, and text on every page. You want to have prominent contact information. I love seeing, for local businesses, I love seeing the phone number first thing when I get to the website, uh, right there in the header. Uh, we talked about being a good data source for Google. You can list your hours of operation on your Google business listing, but have them on your website too. Make them easy to find. The footer is a good place for this. If you have major groups of services or major products that you offer, major product groups, then consider having a page devoted to each of these major service categories. And I mean a well-developed page, not something with 50 words that says, you know, hey, we do exterior painting, and another page says, hey, we do interior painting. You know, lots of pictures, lots of information. You want to be sure your website's mobile optimized. Uh, it's 2018. Please be sure that your website looks good on desktop, tablet, and phones. Over half, I actually think this is over 60% now of all organic search happens on mobile. You want to have a tappable phone number on your website. So, and I don't mind if you pull out your phone and look, but when you pull out your phone and look for your business, you go to your website, where's the phone number? Is it right there? Do you have to scroll? Do you have to hit the menu button? How many clicks do you have to do? How many taps do you have to do before you can actually find the phone number? Ideally, it's really super easy to find. Okay, now that you've found it, try tapping it. Uh, did you miss and actually hit the uh, link to the about page or something instead because you know, your finger's too fat? That's actually what we call a, uh, the, a tap target that's too small. So make sure that's not an issue and then Let's say you finally actually managed to tap that phone number. What happens? Does it dial the number or does it not do anything? Does it just highlight the text or nothing? Uh, try it on an iPhone, try it on an Android phone. Sometimes some of the easiest wins in SEO is to just improve conversion optimization. And this is conversion optimization when you make it easier for people to reach you. And then you want to Make it fast. Make your site blazing fast. This is from Google. 53% of visits are abandoned if a mobile site takes longer than three seconds to load. Half of all visits. I guarantee you that the average load time for websites, all websites, is way more than three seconds. Um, ideally, you know, your page is going to load in one, two, three seconds. But too often I see things like this. This is from webpagetest.org. And there are a lot of different places out there to test page speeds. Some of them are very optimistic. Pingdom always says it loads faster than uh, it seems to. But um, this one, 7.993 seconds for load time. 12.245 seconds for fully loaded. And if we're talking about how long until it's interactive, and you can scroll or you can input information into a contact form or something, it's probably longer than that. Um, I blocked out the URL of this website, but this is not an uncommon occurrence. Make sure your site's secure. Uh, that's HTTPS and not HTTP. Google Chrome about a month ago started throwing up this warning for any websites that are on HTTP. Not secure, so you don't want that. Uh, I want to close by talking about expertise, authority, and trust signals. Google's rolled out a few updates this year. Uh, there were a lot in April and May that dealt with site quality and expertise, authority, and trust signals, but there was a massive one in August, August 1. Uh, seems to hit um, healthcare sites more than others, but it really did seem to hit pretty much across the board. 
uh, probably one of the biggest updates they've done since Panda and Penguin. Expertise, authority, and trust signals are more important for what they call your money or your life sites. So if it's a finance site, um, an e-commerce site where people can spend money on the site, or if it's a health-related site, or even you know, something about parenting or something like that. So it, these become more important. But I think expertise, authority, and trust signals are important for all sites. So expertise and authority signals, what can you do? You can have an about the author box. You can have author bios talking about who's writing the content on the site. Highlight your degrees, credentials, certifications, years of experience, awards, anything you can do. Publications, if you're a published author or if you write for other websites, you can mention that. Just generally talk, talk about what makes you an expert, what uh, gives you authority in this subject area. And it doesn't have to be degrees and credentials and things like that. It can be life experience. And Google is aware that a lot of times we're talking about life experience here. For trust signals, it's a little different. Uh, you want to make sure your site's secure. Have a privacy policy. WordPress has a stock privacy policy that you can add to your site now. Have an about page, a well-developed about page, not just a page that says, hey, we're three guys in a basement in Asheville doing web design. Um, you know, have pictures of the people that are involved. Uh, you know, give some of your backstory. Talk about your business in detail. Contact information. Can people find contact information on your site? Is there a way for them to actually reach you? Phone number, email address, street address. Um, those things provide more trust that you're a legitimate business. Again, uh, you can highlight membership certifications, licenses, and I put this as a trust signal also because, like, on your home page, you know, you can have, um, you can link and have the logos for the Asheville Chamber, uh, Better Business Bureau, um, certifying agencies. If you're uh, an IT provider, uh, you know, you can show your certifications there. And then reviews and testimonials. It's great to be able to embed those on your site as well and show those. And again, the home page is a great place to do that. So those are the five components of local search. Um, and this is me. I've got a uh, local business in town. Local is where it's at .com. I do SEO for folks, mainly local SEO. And my email address is rich at localiswhereitsat.com. And my Twitter handle is at Rich Owings. And I do kind of a curatorial feed there. I only post two or three times a week. But if there's important things happening in SEO, in the world of SEO, important SEO news, I do this to keep my clients updated. I try to post about it there. And uh, the link to the slides, bit.ly slash SEO goes local 2018. So... I've been accused of talking fast. I probably blasted through that way too quickly. But yes? Uh, yeah. The, the question is, is there a, a benefit or a hindrance to using um, a top-level domain, uh, something other than .com? Uh, no. Generally, there isn't. I mean, it may influence click-through rate if people are more familiar, you know, with dot-coms and things. But um, Google says, and I've seen, I mean, I've seen studies saying otherwise, but I don't trust any of the, th the things I've all seen have been sketchy. I'd say no. I don't think it makes any difference at all. Yeah. Get5stars.com with the five spelled out. post now? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, what can I say about Google guaranteed ads? So Google, I'm trying to remember the exact term. Google started um, 
a service. Um, it's paid ads, basically, for service area businesses. They started focusing on businesses that had a lot of scammers, um, locksmiths and things like that, um, garage door companies. And uh, they started rolling it out in major metropolitan areas. I think Greenville Spartanburg has some now. And it says, uh, it, it comes up above the map pack, it says Google guaranteed. So, but people are paying for this service. The, the service area businesses are, are paying for these listings. Apparently the, for most businesses, um, apparently the, the economics of it are pretty good. Um, I've seen people saying that, you know, it's very, very low cost per lead in doing that. They do, they have to do a background check on everyone in the business. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of things associated with that. I think it's, um, I think they're calling it local search ads, maybe. So, yeah. Uh, the question is, how often do you need to go in and check these major listings? Um, great question. I would certainly do it. I, I do it fairly often. Um, I mean, if you can do it weekly or something, I think that's good. Um, you certainly don't want to let more than six months go by without doing it. I noticed like Bing Places recently, um, when you log into your dashboard there, they'll say, these are listings that we have um, um, low, um, what am I trying to, trying to think of here? They're, these are listings that we, don't, that we have low confidence in. Um, because they haven't been updated in a while, and you just have to go in. You can even go in and make what's called a null edit, where you don't go in and change anything, but you go in and click on a field and then do the save button, so they know that you've gone in and logged in and done something there. Um, but yeah, I would do it as often as you can. I think you know, weekly or monthly, never go over six months without doing it. I, not that I, I know of it. I mean, as long as you're actually pulling in that business information and you're able to pull in the business name and the reviews and all, I don't think there's any benefit to going one way or the other. <laughs> 